The offseason might not be here for everyone yet, but the Jets have plenty of time to look through some free agents. Let's talk about that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just really love and appreciate your support. Like I said, tonight's episode, we are going to be talking about free agents for a bit. Uh, Obviously, we have talked a little bit about free agents before because the Jets have several of their own that are going to be uh, potentially departing. But I think for Winnipeg this year, um, there is some impetus to really get aggressive, whether it's in the trade market or the free agency market. And with the Jets likely to have a couple of different departures this wouldn't be the worst time to start looking at some potential options who could actually help the Jets create offense and also stabilize uh, the the top six. Because I think right now it's a little bit imbalanced and with the very likely departure of Ehlers, which again, not 100% confirmed, but it is seemingly uh, waiting in the wings, I guess. The Jets have some uh, real urgency to find some options up front. And the trade market is is looking pretty decent. I think that there's some real candidates out there, but I think there continues to be a question of whether or not sinking free agency money into a couple of players is really worth the, the cost of entry. So before we dive into which guys might actually justify the price tag, just wanted to let you know that tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Now, like I said, free agents, right? Uh, Up front, the Jets probably are looking for two things, a winger and a center. Now, the center, I I know people will say, well, Sean Monaghan certainly satisfies that category. And you're right, he does. He's also not really the kind of player that I think Winnipeg should really go after. Uh, You know, I I saw on Twitter today, somebody uh, had a a Twitter thread about a couple of forwards that they might target. And uh, Tavo Tarabinen was actually one of the targets um, and Tara Bynan is very good. He's been one of um, Carolina's premier forwards for many years now. When he was with the Hawks, I think the general sense with him was that he was pretty underrated. He was uh, secretly a, a very effective two-way player, great shot, great creator. He could uh, finish off a fair few number of opportunities. And in terms of his distribution and playmaking, he was one of their top players before Aho kind of took the shine. But Tara Bynan, I think, has gone under the radar for a while now, despite being uh, a pretty routine, like, 60-ish point kind of player. He is really good. Um, You know, I know the past couple of seasons have seen some ups and downs with him, but overall, I would say uh, this is a really, really good player, and so long as he stays healthy, you could get a couple of really good seasons out of him. I think the biggest question is whether you think he is the guy who uh, three years ago posted 65 points, or perhaps the season after that posted 37. This year he had 53 points uh, in in almost a full season, which is pretty firmly in like second liner territory. But if you also look at how much ice time he's getting, it's kind of in the modest territory. He's playing and averaging less than 17 minutes a night, which given that sort of circumstance, I think suggests he's doing pretty well for himself. He's playing a little bit more than Ehlers is, but in terms of his productivity, he is a, a very effective creator. And I think if the Jets want slot offense and some good perimeter play with a guy who can play down the middle or out wide as you need him to, uh, Tara Biden for me makes a lot of sense. He also doesn't sacrifice as much defensive stability. He tends to be pretty decent at man, mar- man marking and doing some zonal work. And I wonder if he'd be willing to come to the Jets. Uh, I don't know if he's going to leave Carolina, but I do think with the Canes likely needing to cut some salary and his age perhaps being a factor, Tara Vinan may be available. 
Another guy I might be potentially interested in uh, is Mantha. Mantha was also on this list and also a player in the past that I've identified as a potential trade target. I'm a little less hot to trot for Mantha than I would be Tara Vinen. Not because Mantha's a bad player, but I just feel like the past year or two has been a little bit underwhelming from him. He's kind of getting back on track, and I think we're starting to just to see more of the Mantha um, that we used to have a lot of expectations for when he was with the Red Wings. But I think if you're really expecting him to be a top six player, I mean, I think he'll probably put up numbers that's pretty close to that territory, but I don't know if it's going to be you know, at the level of what you might get if you just gave Ehlers top line minutes. I think that is a, a more debatable question and something that for as, as decent as I think he is, I, I might prefer him more as a trade deadline acquisition, but maybe if you can get him for a reasonable deal at like three years, perhaps, you know, he could potentially uh, slide into the Jets second line or something and become a big, powerful four checking force with a pretty decent shot. You'd be banking on him bouncing back and having a big run like he sort of did with the caps at the end there, uh, rather than the kind of player who for the past few years has really struggled to hit the 30 or 40 point mark. So uh, some questions about what his uh, caliber of play is going to be at this point, but um, he does kind of fit some of what Winnipeg likes, and perhaps the Jets would be a place where he rebuilds his confidence and maybe even comes on a relative discount. So some stuff to consider there. One other guy that could be of interest up front uh, is, is Alex Venberg. And the thing with Venberg uh, that I always feel is that he's very good at creating. He just doesn't score. Uh, for some reason, he's like an elite playmaker and really a very strong presence down the middle. But if you're asking him to actually finish chances, for some reason, he just hasn't really been known for that throughout much of his career. Um, I don't know what it is about him that he's traditionally been allergic to finishing. I think he might have Adam Lowry syndrome, syndrome maybe, but it's, it's funny because where Lowry really lacks finishing ability, I just feel like Venberg uh, is is more of a, a creative and, and two-way type than he is the kind of guy who punishes chances. Um, he tends to make most of his lines better uh, in terms of play creation and chance creation, but you look at his actual points totals and stuff and you ask, why is his you know scoring rate so low? And it's a weird one. Uh, I think he would probably be a more interesting depth option for me, and I don't think that's the kind of role he'll want. He's going to be asking for like middle six to top six minutes, and given how his production is, I just don't know if I'm really that interested in that. I would consider him more for a fourth line role and honestly just move Nemesnikov up. I know Nemesnikov has some cosmetic issues and he's not like the world's most elite 2C, but he did a really good job earlier this year with Perfetti, so... You know, I'm kind of uh, loath to really get too much money invested in free agents. And if you do a, a more budget deal with Venberg, should he be willing to take it? I mean, you could have like a decent rotational middle depth uh, uh, squad. But I think, you know, if you're asking for like a top six center or something of that nature, you're probably not going to find one. In terms of other wingers, the Jets could have an interest in. Maybe Victor Arvidsson would be somebody to watch. Uh, he's been great for the Kings when he's actually been healthy. And therein kind of lies the rub. He's often not healthy. So as much as I really enjoy him and think he's a great player, I just don't really know if that fit actually works because he just tends to get hurt a lot. Uh, I think that's an unfortunate truth. I think it's not going to change. And, you know, I don't think Winnipeg should sink a lot of money there. One guy I, I do kind of hold some intrigue with is is Anthony Duclair. And Duclair's uh, certainly an interesting player. He gets passed around a lot at trade deadlines. He tends to finish a lot of his opportunities. And with him perhaps looking for a competitor, maybe the Jets would be a good landing spot. I don't know if they can insulate some of his defensive uh, lapses and stuff the way that other teams could. But in terms of a squad that might be able to uh, make use of his really good finishing and offer him a good middle six rotation deployment, I think he might be worth investigating, especially if the Ealer, uh, or especially if the Jets lose Ealers in free agency. So um, not free agency necessarily, but like on a trade, right? I think that is a legitimate question. So this year, uh, the free agent class for me is, is interesting in terms of guys who might be more in the second to third line tier. But I think if you're looking for a really game-changing presence, probably not going to be available for the Jets. So uh, measure your expectations when it comes to uh, this year's offseason spending. But 
Uh, speaking of spending and stuff, I wanted to talk a little bit about the numbers game. And by the numbers game, I mean the fact that Arneal may want to use analytics a little more aggressively and why, especially this offseason, that could be a huge benefit to the Jets. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Before we go any further, though, I did want to shout out our partners at Policy Genius. Life is unpredictable, and sometimes you find yourself in a tougher spot than you'd expect. Um, you just have to look at my wrist to know that I've uh, had a, a spill or two. And you know what? Health insurance, it can be tough, right? You're looking for the right policy that's going to cover an injury like that. And, you know, sometimes if you're worried about an even more serious situation, you might be looking for life insurance. And Policy Genius totally understands that the process can be dense, complicated, and frankly, for some folks, scary. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options are 100% online and let you avoid unnecessary medical exams. I would suggest you highly give them a shot. Obviously, for those of you who either don't have life insurance or have, have maybe been on the fence. I think this is, you know, as good a time as any. There's plenty of um, unfortunate circumstances out there in the world. And the last thing you want to do is leave your family unprotected in the case of the worst. So go to Policy Genius, check them out. I think that they can offer you some really great options. They have a great staff that's going to walk you through the whole process and explain what stuff means. So you're not going to get lost in the jargon and you can get peace of mind by finding the right life insurance with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. Hey, friends, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we're just uh, chatting about some interesting things. I just talked a little bit about free agency. I'm sure we're going to have more thoughts on that as we get closer and closer to uh, contracts here up uh, around the start of July. Should be some interesting times for players who might be extended, guys who might be leaving. And I think in Winnipeg's case, you might be looking for one or two acquisitions that hopefully don't suck. Um, not that, you know, the Jets have been signing lots of poor players recently. In general, I think the Jets have made better decisions as of late, which, hey, you know, in previous years, I couldn't always say that. So I'm happy to say that I have a little more confidence in their decision making these days. I do want to talk a little bit about the analytics push, though, and I've, I've, I've mentioned it before, but I think especially this offseason, it could be really helpful for the Jets. We'll talk about why in just one sec. Before we go any further, though, for those of you who are Fox Sports or ESPN watchers, if you find yourself having to turn down the volume because there's too much shouting, maybe you should make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you daily to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Now, like I said, for the Jets, uh, this offseason is wide open. There's a lot of unpredictability. I think the free agency market and the trade market are... Um, I mean, they're okay. There's some teams that are going to be cutting salary, and some of that salary might actually be pretty decent players. But I think if you're the Jets, one of the things that you're going to have to get used to is using analytics to find players who are undervalued, right? Guys who are perhaps not flashy, but if you uh, look at how they create chances, the volume that they do, and, and what they offer you on the ice, you might be able to find some guys who on the right team and with the right line mates could actually really blossom into some quality scorers. And I'm not going to say that there's tons of guys out there like this, but I think when you look at guys like Daniel Sprong and, and a few other players like that, Sprong's been a great rate scorer and also just a great finisher. But I think if you actually look at his underlying stats profile, he's really rounded out his game overall. Um, and, you know, maybe it's playing with teams like, uh, Oh, gosh, Detroit, that's really forced him to change how he, uh, you know, adjusts and, and how he plays and how much he back checks and stuff. But I think for Winnipeg, the biggest thing is that you've got to make the most of the, the limited uh, dollars that you've got. The Jets never really have a big salary bill. And, and if we're being honest, Winnipeg isn't the biggest of spenders. I know that they do actually uh, get closer to the cap. But when you look at how they construct their team, they're not really spending like $11 million on one player. Uh, you usually see them top out at like eight, eight and a half, and that's really pushing it for the squad. So 
the Jets have lots of contracts, but I think what they're really looking for or what they should be after is, you know, quality in the margins. And if you really develop a good data science department that can help you find really undervalued signings, maybe players who have, haven't have perhaps gotten big roles elsewhere, but could shine with the Jets, or, you know, maybe some guys who just offer you some really good peripheral and depth scoring relative to uh, their deployments. I think Morgan Barron uh, is like a great example of what I'd be looking for. Uh, that could really give the Jets a competitive edge. A lot of teams are already using data science to build out their rosters. Uh, Colorado has invested heavily in it. Carolina has. I would imagine the Stars actually have to a degree. I feel like Dallas is generally a smart team, um, and I, I wonder what their data science department is like, but a lot of really good contenders have pushed in this direction. Not everyone's doing it. Some teams are just... Uh, you know, good at identifying talent and perhaps don't rely on deeper analysis as much. Not that they don't pay for it or do it, but perhaps it's just for them, not a focus. I think the Jets have traditionally been um, not a, a big believer or proponent in, in deeper stats analysis. Uh, they do do it, but they just don't really make it a, a, a core part of the organization. And that's where what Arneal said at the press conference uh, when he was hired, I thought was fascinating. The fact that he wants to make it a bigger part of the team and that he wants to get other parts of the organization on the same page, I found fascinating. You don't really see many Jets coaches, A, endorsing uh, deeper stats analysis, and B, talking about the fact that the org itself hasn't really made the most of it. So uh, for me, that is actually pretty encouraging. It tells me that Arneal might legitimately have his head space in the right place. Like, you know, I talked about finding coaches who would be open-minded, who would be willing to try new things, and who would help push this team forward. But if Arneal really is that guy, I mean, <laughs> you had him internally, that's amazing, right? You wouldn't have to go outside to find somebody who can do that kind of stuff and talk that sort of talk. What I want to see now is some real action and i'd be curious to know what the front office looks like in a couple of weeks right what are they doing what are they pursuing are they making contract deals are they making trade offers how are they going to approach team construction this offseason because it will determine what the next few years are going to look like and i don't want the jets to just commit lots of money in an attempt to keep things going i want them to seriously evaluate where things went wrong in the playoffs and you know so far the sense that i get is that Arneal is kind of on the same page. Scott seems to have a pretty decent understanding of where Winnipeg went really south in this playoff run, and it seems like he is interested in actively addressing it, and not only doing that, but organizationally preparing this team for the future. So um, if he's you know the next person to modernize the Jets team, I think that would be killer. Uh, it's really funny because when you look at his pathway to getting to this point, most people would probably not assume that he'd ever reach the stage. I most certainly did not envision him to be um, as forward thinking or as as willing to be considerate of that as he has indicated. And I, I'm not going to say that I know for sure what his thought process is, but at least on record, he seems to be endorsing it. And I think that should be a good thing. Even if Winnipeg, you know, only goes with a couple of improvements or, or invests maybe halfway through it, that's a big step up from what the Jets have traditionally been doing. So I don't know. The Arneal hiring, uh, the more he's he's spoken about some of his thoughts and ambitions, the more I kind of like it, uh, at, at least from like a high level philosophical perspective. Do I think the Jets could have gotten somebody externally who could do some similar stuff or maybe had some similar ideas? Sure. Technically, yeah, I think that could work. But if Arneal really does have the buy-in from players like Perfetti and some of the kids and, you know, the veterans also think that he knows what he's doing, I understand why Winnipeg might not have wanted to go away from that. And you know what? I, I can live with that. And I'm, I'm curious to know what he'll do uh, this upcoming season. So, Let's just hope that he really is willing to be open-minded and get this team to a present state because I think this Jets team uh, with <clears throat> deeper data science and data and analysis could really put together a team that's capable of getting past game like one game, one win of a playoff series. Uh, I know that that's a low bar to set, but like let's just start off with the basics, right? Uh, and and try and beat out what the Jets have been doing recently. So lots of fun stuff to consider. Uh, obviously. You know, for some of you, it's it's probably going to be the cup finals uh, tomorrow. But 
one thing that I think is worth talking about, and it's sort of related to all of this, whether it's roster construction or where Winnipeg sits upon uh, that sort of pile, is that the, the Central itself has really gotten better. And I feel like there's not been that much acknowledgement of how good it is, especially this past season. I want to talk about who's really rising in this division and why it's going to make it really difficult for the Jets in just a quick moment. Uh, before we go any further, though, like I uh, mentioned earlier, our friends and partners at Game Time sponsored, uh, sponsored tonight's episode, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about why they're a great ticket purchasing option. When it comes to buying tickets, a lot of you get hit with surprise fees, and you know what? Sometimes you're buying blind, right? You buy a ticket in a section, but you're not actually sure what the view is like. Game Time totally gets it. They've been customers of other vendors just like you at some point in their lives, and you know what? They hate the same stuff, and that's why they want to help you get killer last-minute deals, uh, all-in prices, views from your seat when available, and all of their uh, great guarantees, whether it's a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and so much more. People love game time so much that they've become one of the official NBA marketplaces for tickets, and they can help you get NBA Finals tickets faster. Best of all, prices on the game time, game time app actually go down the closer you get to tip off. So if you're someone who wants to take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets, go with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and be sure to use promo code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H O for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Greetings, friends, and welcome back to tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we're just quickly wrapping up with some final thoughts. Obviously, uh, you know. I think when it comes to divisions in the NHL, uh, obviously the Central doesn't have any cup finals representatives this year. Uh, unfortunately, we saw the last one get ousted by the Oilers. But what I will say is that I think the Central also had the best division in hockey, and that's also why you don't see uh, any representatives coming to the cup finals. It's because they all beat the snot out of each other uh, in some really, really tough matchups, especially in the first round. The fact that the first and second rounds arguably had uh, better uh, cup finals matchups than the later rounds really does speak to not only the, the occasional problems with the, the playoff structure, but also the fact that, especially on the central side of the bracket, it was a bloodbath. Uh, there were some amazing teams this year. Colorado, even with its flaws, I mean, just humbled the Jets. Uh, Dallas was super deep and super strong and really impressed me. But I think a couple of teams that are starting to uh, really make a name for themselves maybe came a little bit of a surprise. I think the biggest one for me is the Preds. Nashville is one of those teams that, you know, Barry Trotz came in and said he needed to uh, start to really look towards the future with this team. But like Andrew Burnett has them playing at such a good level that I'm not sure what their plan is. I think the smart choice is to start to uh, – look to sell some talent that maybe isn't going to be around in a few years. And really they do need to kind of tank for top end talent because like the jets, they're in a market that's maybe not as conducive uh, to, to huge revenues that you can just throw at big players. That's not how they build. That's not how they've ever been built. And I think if, if you're looking at Nashville's roster, you can tell that high end offensive talent is probably something that comes at a little bit of a premium for them. So they probably need to get some big draft picks. But the thing with that team that scares me is that Brunette is really good. And he had a, a very mediocre roster uh, pull off an incredible turnaround in a year that everyone kind of thought they would suck. Like, I think even Trotz was expecting them to be dog crap. And instead, the Preds were like one of the fastest rising teams in the Central, especially in the second half of the season. Granted, some of their wins were thanks to Saros being great and, and certainly some fortune, but you can't really overlook just how much work Brunette did to take a team that traditionally hasn't impressed and actually looked pretty dangerous. So that part is uh, not fun if you're a Jets fan because the Preds being good again, on the one hand, does at least make you uh, think back on the old days. Maybe you uh, miss when the, the Preds and Jets were having those series against one another and you actually enjoyed it. But um, I think in terms of the Central Division, it just means that there's another mouth to feed. There's not really many crap teams here. Um, 
obviously the Yotes before they moved to Utah, I guess they're still going to stay in the Central unless they move to, to the Pacific or something. Uh, I guess we'll find out closer in on that. My best guess is they just stay in the Central, though. I don't really think that they're really moving to a location that would require them to move back to the Pacific. Um, but then, you know, you've got Chicago. I think the scary thing with the Hawks is if they ever uh, really build around Bedard, that's going to be a scary team at some point. But then, like, even the mediocre teams like the Blues and the Wild are still a pain in the butt. Uh, you know, they're just, whether it's like Minnesota being a really goony kind of team uh, that takes a very punishing physical tact against you or you've got the blues who are just a slow and heavy team but certainly um find ways to squeak out wins when they probably shouldn't you just don't have very many easy dinners in this division and then you've got like three great teams in winnipeg colorado and dallas and look i know that you're gonna say well you've talked about how the jets weren't really in the same category as the abs and that's true of the playoffs certainly but i still think the jets deserve credit for having been a great regular season team that doesn't you know erase how they got there and i think that that is still important to acknowledge even if it didn't end in anything happy still a great run and i think it showed just why uh winnipeg um was was a team that put up a really strong season you know it's unfortunate it ended the way it did but I think it's great to see the Central doing well again. Um, it, it is a little bit unfortunate that uh, none of our teams actually advanced to the finals, but I think most of the teams that uh, were in the postseason probably had a, a pretty decent shot or were at least on par with some of the better teams out in the East. So um, the Central, there's going to be an arms race this offseason. I think we're going to see some really crazy trades. I suspect you know uh, the Blues might be active. Um, Nashville certainly will be, I think Colorado is going to be doing a lot of work to try and figure out their goaltending question. Dallas is going to want to improve upon, uh, what they already had while also trying to figure out how on earth you replace the legendary Joe Pavelski. So, um, a lot of fun stuff to consider, maybe some daunting considerations. If you're a Jets fan, let me know what you think about the growing central. And if you're worried about it, do you think the Jets are going to stay towards the top of this division? Or do you think that teams like Nashville will eventually overtake them? I'm kind of in the camp that I think that, you know, Winnipeg is probably still going to hang around the top three. I just think that they're too talented at times. And if they make the right trades and, and acquisitions this offseason, they could even go back to fighting for a second or at the top of it, a first seed in the division, uh, partly because Hellebuck's just that freaking good, man. And then you have a, a half decent team in front of him. That tends to go a bit of a, a bit of a distance. But let's not count our chickens before they hatch. Uh, the real test is when you get to the playoffs, right? What happens after that? bit of a tougher question. Uh, I, I know that I still think a, a wild card position is the most likely uh, scenario next year, but hey, maybe Winnipeg makes a couple of big deals and we get something really exciting. So lots of stuff to consider, lots of uh, lots of big conversations for the Jets front office to have. Let me know how you're feeling about this offseason in the comments below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. For tonight's episode, though, that's going to be all the time that we have. Next week, we will have some early Stanley Cup Finals coverage. I'm hoping for um, some exciting games, even if my favorite teams aren't playing. But let me know who you're rooting for in the comments below. Like I said, though, that's all the time we've got for tonight. As always, have a great night and go Jets go.